Get ready to rock. The South Dakota Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is about to add some familiar names and faces from the Kelloland music scene, and they want you to help them celebrate. South Dakota Rock and Roll Music Association President John Mogan and drummer Dick Bartling with the Aaron Barron Band are here to highlight this year's two-day music celebration. Well, welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start with you, Dick. What is the rock and roll scene like here in South Dakota? Well, unfortunately, rock isn't the people's predominant form of pop music anymore, but certainly growing up, for me, it was. Um, I was born in 1959, and Beatles came to America in 1964, and so I had a teenage sister at that point and was just amazed at, at girls screaming at these guys on TV playing rock and roll and I remember thinking you know I think I'd kind of like to do that and and fortunately my parents uh, were very supportive of me playing drums and and uh, it was just a time when it was really easy to get involved in, in playing rock music because every guy wanted to have a band now, and uh, so it, it was a fun time. Now speaking of bands and rock music, John, now who are some of the inductees that are getting enshrined this year in the Hall of Fame? Uh, we're inducting um, Bands, uh, seven bands, two of them are chosen not to play. We kind of got the A to Z, starting with Aaron Barron. I'll let Dick tell you about Aaron Barron. Asia is a band from Rapid City. They were kind of uh, eclectic, experimental. Uh, and anyway, just they made a couple albums and they were very, very popular throughout yeah. the state. Uh, one of the bands that's not playing is Cascades, but they are from here in, in uh, Sioux Falls and uh, from Sioux Falls, Lincoln. Uh, another one, a band is called Choosy Music. They are playing. The guy's in the guy in the middle is Will Prines. Okay. Uh, Power Play. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, that's Rod Jerky. That's Rain Jerky's dad, and Rain's oh, going to no be way. singing with them. Uh, R&B Supply is not playing, but they are just an incredible rhythm and blues band. And Uncle Zeke from Aberdeen. Uh, they were they were probably one of our earlier bands from the late '60s and early '70s, and they kind of broke up because of the, of the war. They had a lot of guys went went off to war. And there's a Spirit of Music Award as well, correct? There are um, the four people that are getting inducted in the Spirit of the Music. That's all, always kind of a sad thing because mm -hmm. last year the the guys on the left uh, is Brad Cordell. He was the lead singer with R&B Supply. Okay. The guy on the right is Common Haroldson. Um, a lawyer here in town who was tragically killed in a plane crash. Uh, two others that are, aren't pictured are Gary Randall, who was right on this set last year. Uh, he and I got to sing a couple things, and he's from uh, Madison. And the other, the other uh, guy is Joe Barron, who was with a band called the Flaming O's. He's from Madison, just an incredible musician. And then lastly, there's a Lifetime Achievement Award as well. Yep. Uh, Stephen Crows, I love talking with him on the phone. He's he's going through experimental treatment for Alzheimer's. Lives, he's originally from Rapid City, but he's played music with McCartney, with uh, Fleetwood Mac, with Kenny Loggins, and just I, I can't wait to see him. I, it, it's a learning experience every time I talk to him on the phone. There's Stephen. There are so many acts, and and one of them is Aaron Barron, which you have been in, Dick, uh, with their band. Can you explain your time with that? Um, well, I joined, Aaron Barron started in 1978, three guys from Miller, South Dakota, middle of South Dakota, uh, formed a band. They had a real strong high school music program out there, and they just decided to start a band. And um, they started with another drummer and then uh, added a, another guitar player later that year, and then they added me um, in early 1979. And we were based out of Brookings because most of us were going to SDSU and had one guy at USD. We played part-time uh, from 1978 through 1981, and then early 1981 we went on the road full-time, playing 200 to 250 nights a year across the 10 state area because it was you could do that in that era. Enough places had live music that you could play literally every Tuesday through Saturday night and then travel somewhere else and mix in some one-nighters. And uh, I'm really grateful that I got to do that um, that traveling and it was a wonderful experience and, and I wouldn't trade those years for anything. But eventually uh, the real world came knocking and it was time to go back and finish my college degree and, and move on professionally. But I've, I've continued to play at a, at a you know, close to a professional level on weekends since then and uh, really looking forward to getting together with the rest of the guys from Aaron Barron because everyone is still playing at a professional level and so we anticipate uh, that things are going to come together quite well. Okay, and John, you were saying earlier that there will be a concert. Now, how many bands you got playing at this this year? Five, five of the seven bands being inducted are playing. We have a, have a jam session on Friday night, the 12th, and the public is welcome to come. It's, it's free. You can give a free will donation if you want. Uh, 
the 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 two bands that aren't playing will still be represented at, yeah. at the thing. And the cool thing about this is it's a weekend where people get together. Uh, you become a, ho a high school or college kid again, and you can just feel that in the room. Our concert uh, it starts at six o'clock on the thirteenth. Uh, tickets are available at sdrrma.com. Uh, you can also get them at Lewis Southgate. But uh, we're just looking forward. This is our 11th year of doing this. so That's great. And my last question is, why is it so important for people to not only attend this, but to get into music? One of the things we do with the money that, that we earn is uh, we give 10, 10 different high schools in South Dakota $1,000 each to help them buy instruments. And so whatever money we make, we're not sitting on it. It's, it's getting out and, and, and mo it's mostly been the smaller schools that struggle for money for their music programs. So uh, we're, we're glad to accept donations if people can't come, but the, the tickets are pretty available. Good. So that, that means people can still make it to this, so it's very important. Yep. And I wanted to thank you both so much for coming today, and, and be sure to, of course, look into some South Dakota music history because, again, it's so important to look into. Yep.